it loveth to fly away. May my pride then fly with my folly and plot. Thus began Zarathustra as down going. Thus spake Zarathustra. F1 RST part. Flash dot. The three metamorphoses. Three metamorphoses of the spirit who I designate to you. Now the spirit becometh a camel, the camel a lion, and the lion ass. Last a child. Many heavy things are there for the spirit, the strong load-bearing spirit in which reverence dwelleth, for the heavy and the heaviest long as its strength. What is heavy? The last is the load-bearing spirit. Then he left it down like the camel, and wanted to be well laden. What is the heaviest thing, me hero? Ask it the load-bearing spirit, that I may take it upon me and rejoice in my strength. Is it not this, to humiliate oneself in order to mortify one as pride? To exhibit one as folly in order to mock at one as wisdom? Or is it this, to desert our cause when it celebrated it? Triumph, to ascend my mountains to tempt the tempter. Or is it this, to feed on the acorns and grass of knowledge, and for the sake of truth to suffer hunger of soul? Or is it this, to be sick and dismiss comforters, and make friends of the deaf, who never hear thy request? Or is it this, to go into foul water when it is the water of truth, and not this plain gold frogs and hot toads? Or is it this, to love those who despise us, and give one as hand to the phantom when it is going to frighten us? All these heaviest things the load-bearing spirit taketh upon itself, and like the camel, which, when laden, hasteneth into the wilderness, so hasteneth the spirit into its wilderness. 23. 24. Thus spake Zarathustra. But in the loneliest wilderness happeneth the second metamorphosis. Here the spirit becometh a lion, freedom will its capture, and lordship in its own wilderness. Its last lord it here seeketh, hostile will it be to him, and to its last god, for victory will it struggle with the great dragon. What is the great dragon which the spirit is no longer inclined to call lord and god? And what thou shalt, and what is the great dragon called? Thank you. 
child's disease, which a me of a lion could not do. Why have the trained lion still to be seen out of a child? Innocence of the child, and forgetfulness, a new beginning, a game, a self-rolling wheel, a first movement, a holy yay. I, for the game of creating, my brethren, there is needed I holy yea unto life, its own will, willeth now the spirit, his own will winneth the world as outcast. Three metamorphoses of the spirit have I designated to you. How the spirit became a camel, the camel a lion, and the lion. At last a child. Thus spake Zarathustra, and at that time he abode in the town which is called the Thai Cow. 2. The Academic Chairs of Virtue People commended unto Zarathustra a wise man, as one who could discourse well about sleep and virtue. Greatly was he honored and rewarded for it, and all the youths sat before his chair. To him went Zarathustra, and sat among the youths before his chair. And thus spake the wise man, respect and modesty in the presence of sleep. That is the first thing, and to go out of the way of all who sleep badly and keep awake at night. Modest as even the thief in presence of sleep, he always stealeth softly through the night. A modest, however, is the night watchman, a modestly he carrieth his horns. 26. Thus spake Zarathustra. No small art is it to sleep. It is necessary for that purpose to keep awake all day. Ten times a day must thou overcome thyself, that causeth wholesome weariness, and is copy to the soul. Ten times must thou reconcile again with thyself, for overcoming is bitterness, and badly sleep the unreconciled. Ten truths must thou find during the day, otherwise wilt thou seek truth during the night, and thy soul will have been hungry. Ten times must thou laugh during the day, and be cheerful, otherwise thy stomach, the father of affliction, will disturb thee in the night. Few people know it, but one must have all the virtues in order to sleep well. Shall I bear false witness? Shall I commit adultery? Shall I covet my neighbor's maidservant? All that would ill accord with good sleep. And even if one have all the virtues, there is still one thing. Needful, to send the virtues themselves to sleep at the right time. That they may not quarrel with one another, the good females. And about thee, thou unhappy one, peace with God and thy neighbor, so desire good sleep. And peace also with thy neighbor as devil. Otherwise it will haunt thee in the night. Honor to the government, and obedience, and one also to the crooked government. So desire good sleep. How can one help it, if power liketh to walk on crooked legs? He who leadeth his sheep to the greenest pasture, shall always be for in the best shepherd. So does it accord with good sleep. Academic Chairs of Virtue 2J Many honors I want not, nor great treasures, they excite the spleen. But it is bad sleeping without a good name and a little treasure. As no company is more welcome to me than a bad one, but they must come and go at the right time. So that it accord with good sleep. Well, also, do the poor in spirit please me, they promote sleep. Blessed are they, especially if one always given to them. This passeth the day unto the virtuous. When night cometh, then take I good care not to summon sleep. It disliketh to be summoned sleep, the lord of the virtues. But I think of what 
I have done and thought during the day. Thus ruminating, the patient is ACOW. I ask myself, what were thy 10 overcomings? And what were the 10 reconciliations, and the 10 truths, and the 10 laughters with which my heart enjoyed itself? Thus pondering, and cradled by 40 thoughts, it overtaketh me all at one sleep, he unsummoned the Lord of the virtues. Sleep tappeth on mine eye, and it turneth heavy. Sleep toucheth my mouth, and it remaineth open. Verily, on soft souls doth it come to me, the dearest of thieves, and stealeth from me my thoughts. Stupid do I then stand, like this academic chair. But not much longer do I then stand, I already lie. When Zarathustra heard the wise man thus speak, he laughed in his heart, for thereby had a light dawned upon him and thus spake he to his heart. A fool seemeth this wise man with his forty thoughts, but I believe he knoweth well how to sleep. Happy even as he who liveth near this wise man. Such sleep as Rontau IOUS even through RCRH underscore a thick wall it is contagious. 28. Thus spake Zarathustra. A magic recited even in his academic chair. And not in vain did he move sit before the preacher of virtue. His wisdom is to keep awake in order to sleep well. And verily, if life had no sense, and had I to choose nonsense, this would be the desirable nonsense for me also. No, no, I will what people sought formerly above all else when they sought teachers of virtue. With sleep they sought for themselves, and copy had virtues to promote it. To all those belauded sages of the academic chairs, wisdom was sleep without dreams, they knew no higher significance of life. Even at present, to be sure, there are some like this creature of virtue, and not always so honorable, but their time is past. And not much longer did they stand, there they already lie. Blessed are those drowsy ones, for they shall soon nod to sleep. Thus spake Zarathustra, J. Backworldsman. Once on a time, Zarathustra also cast his fancy beyond man, like all backwardsmen. The work of a suffering and tortured God, did the world then seem to me. The dream and diction of a god, did the world then seem to me, colored vapors before the eyes of a divinely dissatisfied one. Good and evil, and joy and woe, and I am thou colored. B-A-C-K-W-O-R-L-D-S-M-E-N 29. Vapors did they seem to me before creative eyes. The Creator wished to look away from Himself, thereupon He created the world. Intoxicating joy is it for His sufferer to look away from His suffering and forget Himself. Intoxicating joy and self-forgetting, did the world once seem to me. This world, the eternally imperfect, an eternal contradic on s image an imperfect image an intoxicating joy to its imperfect creator thus did the world once seem to me thus once on a time did i also cast my fancy beyond man like all backworldsmen beyond man pursue ah ye brethren that god whom i created was human work and human madness like all the gods. A man was he, and only a poor fragment of a man and ego. Out of mine own ashes and glow it came unto me, that phantom. And verily, it came not unto me from the beyond.
what happened, my brethren. I surpassed myself, bearing one. I carried mine own ashes to the mountain, a brighter flame I contrived for myself. And lo, there upon the phantom withdrew from me. To me the convalescent would it now be suffering and torment to believe in such phantoms. Suffering would it now be to me, and humiliation. Thus speak I to backwoldsmen. Suffering was it, and impotence that created all backwoods, and the short madness of happiness, which only the greatest sufferer experienced. Weariness, which seeketh to get to the ultimate with one leap, with a death leap, a poor ignorant weariness, unwilling even to will any longer, that created all gods and backwoods. Believe me, my brethren, it was the body which the spirit of the body is broke with the anger that the infatuated spirit of the ultimate walls. 30. Thus spake Zarathustra. Believe me, my brethren, it was the body which the spirit of the earth that heard the bowels of existence speaking unto it. And then it got to get through the ultimate walls with its head and not with its head only into in plot, the other world. And plot, but that in plot, other world and plot, is well concealed from man that the humanized, in human world, which is a celestial knot, and the bowels of existence do not speak unto man, except as man. Verily, it is difficult to prove all being, and hard to make it speak. Tell me, me brethren, is not the strangest of all things best proved? Yea, this ego, with its contradiction and perplexity, speaketh most uprightly of its being this creating, willing, evoluing ego, which is the measure and value of things. And this most upright existence, the ego is speaketh of the body, and still impeeth the body, even when it nurseth and rabbit and fluttereth with broken wings. Always more uprightly leerneth it to speak, the ego, and the more it leerneth, the more does it find titles and honors. For the body and the earth, a new pride taught me mine ego, and that teach I unto. Men, no longer to thrust one s head into the sand of celestial things, but to carry it freely, a terrestrial head, which giveth meaning to the earth. A new will teach I unto men, to choose that path which man hath followed blindly, and to approve of it and no longer to slink aside from it, like the sick and perishing. The sick and perishing it was they who despised the body and the earth, and invented the heavenly world, and the redeeming blood drops, but even those sweet and sad poisons they borrowed from the body and the earth. From their misery they sought escape, and the stars double your earth. B-A-C-K-W-O-R-L-P-S-M-E-N 3. Too remote for them. Then they sighed, and thought, oh that there were heavenly paths by which to steal into another existence and into happiness. And thought, then they contrived for themselves their vitas and bloody graphs. Beyond the sphere of their body and this earth they now fancied themselves transported, these ungrateful ones. But to what did they owe the convulsion and rapture of their transport? To their body and this earth, gentle as Zarathustra to the sickly. Verily, he is not indignant at their modes of consolation and ingratitude. May they become convalescents and overcomers, and create higher bodies for themselves. Neither is Zarathustra indignant that a convalescent will look as tenderly on his delusions, 
and at midnight steal it round the grave of his god, but sickness and a sick frame remain even in his tears. Many sickly ones have there always been among those who use, and languish for God, violently they hate the discerning one, and the latest of virtues, which is uprightness. Backward they always gaze toward dark ages, then, indeed, were delusion and faith something different. Raving of the reason was likeness to God, and doubt was sin. Too well do I know those godlike ones. They insist on being believed in, and that doubt is sin. Too well, also, do I know what they themselves most believe in. Verily, not in backwards and redeeming blood drops, but in the body do they also believe most, and their own body is for them the thing in itself. But it is a simply thing to them, and gladly would they get out of their skin. Therefore hearken they to the creatures of death, and themselves preach backwards. 32. Thus spake Zarathustra. Hearken rather, my brethren, to the voice of the healthy body, it is a more upright and pure voice. More uprightly and purely speak is the healthy body, perfect and square built, and it speaketh of the meaning of the earth. Thus spake Zarathustra, for, the despisers of the body, to the despisers of the body will I speak my word. One wish them neither to learn afresh, nor teach anew, but only to bid farewell to their own bodies, and thus be dumb. And quad, body, am one, and soul and quad. So saith the child, and why should one not speak like children? But the awakened one, the knowing one, saith, and quad body am I entirely, and nothing more, and soul is only the name of some thing in the body. And quoth, the body is a big sagacity, a plurality with one sense, a war and a peace, a flock and a shepherd. An instrument of thy body is also thy little sagacity, my brother, which thou callest and quoth, spirit and quoth a little instrument and and quat ego and quat plaything of thy big sagacity sayest thou and art proud of that word for the greater thing in which thou art unwilling to believe is thy body with its big sagacity it saith not and quat ego and quat but doth it what the sense feeleth what the spirit discerneth, hath never its end in itself. But sense and spirit would fain persuade me the TNEY or the NOTL. Things. So vain art they. The DESP1SERS of the body. 33. Instruments and playthings are sense and spirit, but here of them there is still the self. The self seeketh with the eyes of two senses, it hearkneth also with the ears of the spirit. Ever hearkneth the self, and seeketh, it compareth, mastereth, conquereth, and destroyeth. It ruleth, and is also the ego's ruler. Behind thy thoughts and feelings, my brother, there is a mighty lord, an unknown sage it is called self, it dwelleth in thy body, it is thy body, there is more sagacity in thy body than in thy best wisdom. And who then knoweth why thy body requires just thy best wisdom? Thyself loveth at thine ego, and its proud prancings. And what, what are these prancings and flights of thought unto me? And what, it saith to itself. And what, a by way to my purpose. I am the letting string of the ego, and the prompter of its actions. And the self saith unto 
to the ego, and clot, feel pain, and clot, and thereupon it suffereth, and thinketh how it may put an end thereto, and for that very purpose it is meant to think. The self saith unto the ego, and quad, feel pleasure, and quad, thereupon it rejoiced, and thinketh how it may oft-times rejoice, and for that very purpose it is meant to think. To the despisers of the body will I speak a word, that they despise is caused by their esteem. What is it that created? Esteeming and despising and worth and will. The creating self created for itself esteeming and despising, it created for itself joy and love. The creating body created for itself spirit, as a hand to its will. Even in your folly and despising ye each serve yourself, ye despisers of the body. I tell you, your very self wanteth to die, and turneth away from life. No longer can yourself do that which it desires most. 34. Thus spake Zarathustra, create beyond itself, that is what it desires most, that is all its fervor. But it is now too late to do so. So yourself wisheth to succumb, ye despisers of the body. To succumb so